After Planet Lord killed me, I knew I had to get him back by creating a trap that even he wouldn't be able to escape. For days I experimented with lethal explosives and game-breaking mechanics, but nothing came close to what I actually made. And that's because I've been standing on it this entire time. This is a 100x100 void trap designed to look exactly like the desert. The size of this thing is so large that as soon as you step over it, you practically have no chance of escaping. The only problem is that this is just a prototype that I threw together in a creative world. If I want to pull this off on Planet Lord, I'll need to break 1.2 million blocks, an additional 30,000 bedrock, place 10,000 signs, 50,000 sand, and then somehow lure Planet Lord on top of the trap, all in survival Minecraft. But I think I can actually pull it off. So I headed out to a desert not too far from spawn and outlined a 100 by 100 block area. I don't think I realized this before, but this area is genuinely massive. Like if Planet steps anywhere on here, he's already dead. In a few days, this entire pit is going to be a crater from surface level to void. But obviously, I can't just hollow that out by hand. So I headed out to gather the necessary materials. A coral reef fan, redstone, iron, and honey blocks all to make this TNT duper. All right, obviously if I wanna clear out this entire pit, I'm gonna need a TNT duper that's like way bigger than this, but I'm just testing it out to see if TNT duping even works. No way it doesn't. Actually, I think the issue is that this needs to be made out of slime. So I organized a meeting with another player who I knew had some, and that's when I saw it. Someone had been here overnight, meaning that my cover was potentially blown. I decided to meet with Leo anyway, but I kept that portal in the back of my mind. So Parrot, what do you have to offer? Out of the few things in my ender chest, I ended up giving Leo Wook a goat horn, and in return, he gave me three stacks of slime blocks, more than enough for this project. But all I could think about was one thing. I made a split second decision as soon as I returned back to the area. I decided to cover up any evidence of me being there, filling in the outline, breaking every single block that I had placed, and then moving to another location around 2,000 blocks away. I knew how big this project was going to be, and I wasn't willing to risk everything this early on. And the next morning, I constructed the first of many TNT dupers that would start carving out a chunk of the world. This was by far going to be the most risky part of the entire operation. Well, this isn't the first time that I've done this. Once I hollow out the entire pit, I can basically place signs and sand that cover it up. But until then, if anyone stumbles across this random hole in the desert, it's gonna raise a lot of questions. I didn't really have much of a choice though, but to spend the entire day clearing out this huge area. And by the time night fell, I had a pretty good portion of it removed. So. I decided to show my progress to one of my friends. Yeah, we got populated sand village though. What? <laughs> oh, oh. So, in two days, this is all gonna be void. No shot. Then, Bacon said something that I hadn't really thought about yet. This is gonna take a while. Do you know how long it took Miles to break all that bedrock, man? Well, I'm gonna be using a bedrock auto breaker. Yeah, he was using a bedrock auto breaker. How long did that take? For the. Yeah, I would look it up right now, actually, to see what you're getting yourself into. And actually thinking about it, I realized that I'd severely underestimated how big of a project this actually was. There were 30,000 pieces of bedrock that I'd have to remove, and even if it only took one second to remove each piece of bedrock, that'd still be nearly 10 hours of just breaking. That's if it took one second. Imagine if it took 10 times that. There goes an entire two weeks of my life. But I was still convinced that I could figure out some way to do this incredibly efficiently, so I kept pushing forward. The next day was dedicated completely towards clearing out the rest of the pit. Oh my god, dude, huge water cave, bro. It was eight straight hours of grueling work, and it was 5 p.m. by the time I finally wrapped up. This was the part that I needed to get done as quickly as possible. I actually wasn't that far from the server spawn, and I was lucky enough that nobody had stumbled across this project yet but I still would have to cover this entire pit up, and I knew that I had a long night of placing signs ahead of me. So I headed to the nearest forest and began tearing down trees. 
After about an hour of doing so, I noticed that a couple of people were talking in a Discord call, one of them being Planet Lord. Yo. Uh, my name is Parrot, and I'm AFK all day. <laughs> what? Parrot, what are you AFKing? Yeah, that's a secret, bruh. But it is What's a it way about? to kill Clown Pierce, right? Sure, bro. Well, I know you want to kill Planet Lord, and you also want to do something in PMC. Wait, you want to kill me? What did I do to you? What did I ever do to you? I thought that my cover had been completely blown. Well, my beef with Planet Lord is settled after okay. I got my chest. Oh, really? Back. Oh, I can change that. I eventually managed to steer away from the conversation, but I was beginning to worry that people were catching on to me and potentially even searching for this trap. I needed to cover up the hole as soon as possible, and I still only had 4,000 of the 11,000 needed signs. So I headed off to grab some more wood. Two hours later, I'd acquired the wood necessary for all 7,000 signs. So, after crafting all of them, I began placing them across the gap. But I quickly realized that I would need just as much sand for this to work. I headed straight to the nearest desert, and for the next hour, I just mined sand, repaired my shovel, and then brought all the sand back to the pit. I've done this so many times over the past two hours that I've literally memorized this path. Watch this, ready? You go down this thing, then you go down this little staircase right here, you take a left, and then you just keep going all the way down, and at the right is the end portal. That's insane. By the time I truly had all the materials to build the part of the trap that disguised the whole thing as a desert, it was nearly 10 p.m. I was hoping to get it finished by midnight, but I had little idea of how long it would actually take. When I do projects like this, I like to do the math behind every little step, and this is gonna take four hours. Along the way, I got another player named Jumper Who to help me out, which was a huge risk since if she told literally anyone about my plan, everything would have been for nothing. Luckily, it seemed like she was against Planet Lord just as much as I was, and for the next few hours, we kept placing signs in sand. It's 1 a.m and I am still placing signs. This is the craziest, but also the stupidest thing I've ever done. And unsurprisingly, as I got more and more exhausted, it was obvious that I was going to mess up at some point. Did you fall? Wait, how did you? Bro. I, I told you to be careful. Oh my God. I think you're good. Oh my God. Yes, there were lots of mishaps, but by the time the clock hit 3 a.m., I was filling in the last row. Oh my Ready? gosh, look at this. Look <laughs> it is really this. cool. <laughs> oh my God. It was such a beautiful moment. I'd gotten so much done in that single day, but I truly had no idea how much more was still ahead of me. Luckily, the trap was now fully covered, so I wouldn't have to be pulling 14 hour days on the server. All right, I'm going to bed, but I'm sorry you had to go through this. Sorry. It was, it, was, it was a fun little activity. <laughs> this is where things really started to get complicated. I needed to remove 30,000 pieces of bedrock, and yes, I could do that completely by hand, but that would take 250 hours or so. Instead, I would need to use this advanced bedrock breaking machine developed by Desu, which not only requires a lot of slime, observers, and other redstone blocks, but also needs 50,000 pistons. To actually craft that, you need 50,000 redstone, 50,000 iron, 150,000 planks, and 200,000 cobblestone. That feels impossible, but I just have to start working. The iron and cobblestone were the easy farms to build. After paying Jumper two hearts to build me an iron farm, I constructed a fully automatic cobblestone farm in a little under 30 minutes, which somehow produces 75,000 an hour. Is that working? Oh my gosh, I think this is actually- THIS THING no IS way. ACTUALLY BROKEN! <laughs> That's two out of the four items done, but this is where it gets quite difficult. The next three hours of my life were dedicated to making a wood farm, and then gathering the necessary bone meal to actually run it. Then came the real question. How in the world was I going to get my hands on 50,000 redstone? Alright, I'm gonna run a test between strip mining and cave mining for redstone, 15 minutes for each method, and I'm gonna compare and see which one actually gets me more, because I'm gonna be mining for a long time. So, after mining redstone for the next 30 minutes... Uh, uh -huh. Okay, that's strike two. I'm getting out of here. I compared the two methods, which were practically identical. And yes, this was quite a bit of redstone, but nowhere near how much I actually needed. To even get my hands on 50,000, 
It would take me an additional 20 hours of mining with these two methods, but I had another idea. A tunnel bore that could break thousands of blocks per minute. Okay, so apparently if I press this note block... What? Wait. Oh. Wait! This thing is insane! Oh my gosh. Okay, the real question is, is this more efficient than just mining redstone by hand? I think it's going to be. But I'm just gonna try it out for a while and see how much we can get. Eventually, I'd gotten just enough redstone to start building the machine. For the rest of that day, I flattened out the walls of the pit to make it harder for Planet to survive on the sides. And when I woke up the next morning, reality was starting to set in. I'm not even gonna lie, I had like an actual mental breakdown last night over this stupid void trap. Really? Yeah. It's Wednesday. And I've already played Minecraft for 35 hours this week, <laughs> and I still have so much more. This project was taking over my life. I had spent nearly every waking hour of the past four days on this server, all to try and build a trap that could potentially not even work. But I was too far in to just give up. I really didn't think about this beforehand, but even something as simple as like flattening out a wall takes an absurd amount of time. I've been doing this for the past six hours and I'm not even halfway done. All that was left to do was break the bedrock, but I didn't have all the pistons needed to do so. In fact, I only had a little over 3000, but I knew deep down that I would have to start now or else this project would take forever. So I began building the automatic bedrock breaker. Just a little concern I'm having, a machine of this caliber has never been run on this server, so I don't even know if it'll work. And with the entire machine constructed and the first 500 pistons placed down, I was ready to see if this thing actually worked. Um, if this fails, I'm honestly not really sure what to do. Guess we are just going to have to run it. So apparently, if we break this, Maybe some of that works. Please. Is that working? That's working! Wait, let me pick up the pistons. I have to pick up the pistons. Oh, this is not good news. This is not good. I don't know if this is how it's supposed to go, but a bunch of the pistons got destroyed right here. I don't think that's a good sign. I don't even know what I can do at this point. I mean, could I break all this bedrock by hand? I kind of doubt it. No, there's- what am I- I'm delusional. I'm delusional for even thinking that this project would work, bro. <sighs> it's like four days of my life just gone. It turns out that the server I'm playing on runs on an installation mode that patches the machine in its entirety. Unless I wanted to break this bedrock manually, this project would be impossible. I couldn't believe it. Hours of my life were crumbling in front of my eyes. Oh my gosh. It's hard for me to process this because I've invested so much time into this project, but I just don't know what to do. But then, I thought back to something that Bacon had said when I showed him the pit for the first time. I mean, there is other stuff you can do with dropping people into a massive hole, though. Like what? My mind started churning. Maybe this was still salvageable. For the rest of that day, I brainstormed other potential ways to make this look realistic. Like item frames with a black map on dripstone, I learned that the textures glitched out when you were too high up. Maybe some sort of mob pit that seemed like it was too easy to escape. Eventually, I settled on black concrete, which, if you look at it from even close up, could be easily mistaken for the void. And the best part was that this was genuinely enough to kill planet. It was high enough where fall damage would be a serious problem. And if it looked like the void, he wouldn't even consider trying to clutch at the bottom. It seemed perfect, besides the fact that I had to get my hands on 10,000 black concrete. I thought placing signs in sand for five hours was bad. This is worse. It's literally just getting gravel, getting sand, placing and breaking concrete, which by the way, takes forever. Feels weird for me to say this, but I feel like I'm genuinely gonna miss this project. Like, it's caused me so much pain, but I've grown such an attachment to this pit. And as I began placing in the concrete, I began to worry about how realistic this would actually look. Sure, the blocks themselves seemed real enough, but there was a bigger problem that I hadn't taken into account. There are so many mobs, oh my gosh. Every five seconds, I have to look up and take care of these things. Which has actually started to make me wonder, like, when planets falling, 
is he going to be able to see these mobs? Soon enough, all of the concrete was placed in, but I still wasn't sure if other players would fall for this. So I met up with my friend who would be the one activating the trap when I lured Planet on top of it. If he fully believed that it was all void, Planet would too in such a high pressure moment. Oh, I see it. Jesus, dog. Okay, back out, back out. And he did fall for it. For the first time in days, I felt confident. Confident that this would work and that my past week on the server wouldn't have been in vain. I spent the next few hours terraforming the entire surface of the trap to make it seem like an actual desert. And soon enough, every single part of it was complete. It had taken me over 60 hours to create this trap. It was the most amount of time I'd ever put into something like this. And with everything in position, all I had to do now was bring Planet over. My plan was to try and distract him with this obvious pillar in the sky that was past the trap. And all I could hope for was that this thing was big enough so that he'd be standing Here, on it. Planet, follow me. Um, okay. Where are we going? You'll notice something in the sky when we get closer. Um, okay? Wait, what is that? What is that thing? That is a mirage. Uh, what's a mirage? It's something that you think exists when it really doesn't. Oh, okay. How is that even... Okay, where are you going with this, bro? Because, planet, this entire desert that we're standing on right now is a mirage. Oh my god! And yes, Planet survived, but I just couldn't care less. Because for the first time that week, I felt free. No more sleepless nights or mental breakdowns because of how big of a project this was. And I could have saved myself. I could have clutched at the bottom or placed a block above the sand, but I didn't. There was just something ironic about it. The very project that had taken so much from me had now taken me down with it as well. And if you made it to the end of the video, please subscribe. It takes a lot of time to make these kinds of videos and we're approaching one and a half million subscribers, which is absolutely insane. Also click the video in the center of the screen. Bye.